look at this glamorous lady. I am, uh, uh, yeah, and I'm not talking about Chris. Um, <laughs> Chris, you look glam, glam, glam all the time, but, oh my word, no, just <laughs> like a lady. Um, right, so, did you watch the Great British Sewing Bee? Of course, of course. Now, no spoilers, please, because I still haven't watched. I still haven't watched the final. <gasps> I need to watch it today. I need to watch it today. But I do know who won because you can't escape it, can you, on social media? So and I'm so pleased that the winner did win. I don't want to say in case anybody didn't get the chance to watch it. But uh, along the Great British Sewing Bee, we've been working with a lot of our guest designers to do a how-to section every single Friday following what they sort of did on the um, Great British Sewing Bee. So obviously they did lovely evening wear. We are going to show you this hour how to sculpt, alter and create beautiful fitted alter, uh, evening wear for you. I don't think we've ever done anything like this. It's very, very unusual for us to do a evening wear like this. And I think this is so, so elegant. All of us fell in love with this dress. I love the, the little um, bolero. Is it called a bolero? I always just think of Torval and Dean and think, no, it can't be called a bolero, but it is the bolero. The sequin is brand new fabric. The satin is Duchess satin. It's beautiful. It's so, so gorgeous. And it's brand new. The pattern is brand new. I'm thinking prom season, wedding season, party season. Have you got any balls, cocktail parties to go to? Summer ball, maybe a prom, maybe bridesmaids, mother of the bride. I mean, these are just bride dresses. These are all absolutely beautiful fabrics that we're going to be bringing you in this hour. An amazing pattern and all of the top tips. I mean, this is boned. How amazing is that? I don't think we've worked with um, boning and shaping like this before. So it's going to be a, a show of how to shape and create your very own evening wear. Right, come on, let's have a look at the pattern. So we've got two different size patterns. They're both exactly the same. It, it ranges from 6 to 20, so this is 6 to 12. You'll need this one. Um, now, Helen has recommended as well, if you're on the borderline, go up, because I'd hate for you to, you know, buy this one thinking, right, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm a 12 to 14, I would go with the 14 pattern, because you can always take in, you can't, obviously, instead of you want to grade it out, then you can, but it's definitely better to go for the larger one. These are so elegant. I love this. So this is the one that we've done today. But it's also got an option of doing this amazing flare as well. Look at that. The bolero um, is the one that we've got on the mannequin, that lovely bolero. But there's also a second option of a bolero like this with long sleeves. So maybe a winter wedding. <gasps> it looks amazing, doesn't it? It's just so, so elegant. I think it's going to be really, really flattering with all of the beautiful darts. Um, and all of the sizes, the breakdowns on the, uh, the back of the pattern. We'll go through with Helen how much fabric we're going to need as well. So, this is exactly the same. It's size 14 to 20. So, you have that lovely, simple, elegant, beautiful evening dress. And I said to Helen earlier, oh, would you be able to add little straps if you wanted to? And she said, oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. So, it's a really lovely, simple dress isn't it that then you can embellish to how you want could you imagine this with Shavosky crystals or with some ruffles you could put some flowers on the top there oh imagine if my new friend Helen McCook did some embroidery on it oh my word you've also got the bolero again the design that um, you've seen on the mannequin and then you've got the longer option as well so it's a really versatile pattern and if I'm honest when I saw this this morning I came in and I said to Helen you are so talented. It looks like something that you would see in Selfridges in a designer store. It's absolutely... And how much would you pay for something like that? As I say, I'm, I'm looking for evening wear constantly at the minute, helping my mum and my family out with um, outfits and bridesmaids, all this sort of thing. It's so expensive. That is so beautiful. And Helen has assured me it's actually really simple. It's something that you're going to be able to do. So, very excited about the show. Okay, should we start with the sparkle? A bit of sparkle on a Friday morning never hurt anybody. So, this is the on-trend colour this season, without a doubt. Whenever I've been looking at any bridesmaids dresses, any, any dresses to do with weddings or party season, summer, blush, blush, blush is in. This is beautiful. It's rose gold. 
absolutely gorgeous rose gold though is here to stay i think it came in a couple of years ago and everyone thought oh is it a bit of a fad no rose gold is here to stay it's absolutely my favorite it's like a warm mix between a silver and a yellow gold it's just gorgeous one four seven wide now again i would be thinking oh, sequins have i ever sewn with sequins before are they going to break my needle am i going to have to have specialized equipment we're going to ask all these questions to helen but she has assured me already it's actually really easy to work with it's actually really nice to work with so this is by the half meter I'm even thinking, I um, have been looking at stylists for weddings as well, and so many people are having like table runners like this. You could even just get these as... <gasps> table runners, sorry, my brain is just working, my brain is just thinking of ideas. That is such a good idea, isn't it? I like the width of it as well, it's perfect width for... Um, it, it's really nice and um, wide. Okay, you get a lot for your money with that. Now, the navy, exactly the same. It's, it's absolute sequin galore. This is, look at it. I'm only giving it a little bit of a shimmer, but look at that. And I did say, could you imagine this all in this fabric? And you could do it. It wouldn't be as sort of structured as the, obviously the satin that we're bringing you, the Duchess satin. But if you were to do this with a really nice, really lovely quality lining, that would make an amazing full evening gown for Christmas as well. I once tried on um, a sequin dress like this that was, oh, it was so expensive though. And I thought, oh, I love it, I love it, but when would I wear it? If you make your own, this is something that then, it, it doesn't matter if you only wear once. It's something that you are going to absolutely wear and wear again at Christmas. It's just amazing. Okay, should we have a look at the... Um, the, the satin so this is duchess satin so it's got great structure it isn't something that's flimsy it isn't something that you need to be really careful about like with your iron etc it's something that's actually really lovely what it's 4.99 a half meter i genuinely thought this would be at least 9 10 11 pounds that is brilliant 147 wide rose gold match so this is the color that you can see on the mannequin absolutely perfect for proms for little girl dresses for ladies i mean this is something that is really really beautiful for any age it's so soft and beautiful this is absolutely my favorite color for the largest size helen has said to us three meters Three and a half, she's saying, just to be on the, the safe side. Three and a half metres. We'll go through all of the sizes with her, but I mean, you're not going to need tons and tons of this, which is brilliant value for money, isn't it? Okay. This is, again, absolutely beautiful. This is such a gorgeous colour. And then any that you have left over, you can make a matching bag, which we're going to see in Helen's next show. Is it called Slate? It's like a lovely powder blue. I would call this powder blue. Oh, it's gorgeous. None of the others look slate, so it must be called slate. I can see why it's called slate. It is like an icy grey blue. £4.99. Let me open it out to show you how much you get. Oh, look at the reverse as well. Look at that. In fact, which way is the reverse? Which is the front and which is the back? Would you have it more as the shiny, shiny side? Oh, look, I've been holding it the wrong way then. Is that the front? Oh, the shiny, shiny side. Oh, I need to show you the rose gold then as well, because the... Um, that's amazing. Let me just show you. Can I just show quickly, Paul, because I was showing the reverse on the pink. There, look. Could you use this either way? Could you have it as the shiny or would it be shiny, shiny Helen's saying? Go shiny, shiny. Okay. Purple. Violet. Oh, they're just so luxurious, aren't they? Oh, look at this. 100% polyester. See, that looks blue on my monitor. I wonder what it looks like on your screen. Does it look more blue or does it look more purple? It's, it is purple. It's like true um, Cadbury's purple. It's absolutely sumptuous. Amazing. Um, the burgundy. 
but it's called Claret, actually. Um, and I believe this is the one that, that we're going to be demonstrating with. Oh, they're amazing. Four pounds and nine. Oh, my word, that is so plush. That looks so expensive, doesn't it? Claret. I say matte, it's not, um, you can use, the, you use that lovely silky shiny side. That would be beautiful again for bridesmaids, wouldn't it? I see so many bridesmaids, that colour. Or little bags as well. Remember in the next hour, we'll definitely make the most of these. They're all brand new. And then without a doubt, one of my favourites. This reminds me of a very expensive dress that I saw in um, LK Bennett's. That is, oh, that's my colour. That is my colour. Oh, <laughs> I've got a new favourite. That is beautiful. <gasps> Right, oh, yes, Laura, Laura, our Laura, she needs to have a dress made out of this colour. This would look lovely on our Laura. If you've got, like, fair or red hair, this is the best colour. And actually, do you know what? My mum is obsessed with this colour, and she's very, very dark. She's got very, very dark hair. <gasps> that is just emerald green, isn't it? OK. Pattern coming back in. Should we go over and see Helen? I'm going to bring the, um, I'm going to take the dress with me because this is just amazing. Hello, hello. hello. I'm so pleased you're here to do this. Hi. This hello. is so good. Lovely to see you. you. And you. It's Hi. so exciting because we don't get to do this very often, evening gowns like this. I know, and this is my thing. This is what I do all the time. So it's. You are so yeah. talented, Helen. I, I mean, I looked at this this morning. This one, easy peasy, it's fine. No, <laughs> I, I would think in no way is that easy. But you're going to show us all of the sort yes. of skills of that, how yep. to alter and how to sort of um, shape evening yeah, wear. Absolutely. Brilliant. So this is all one pattern as well, the lovely little bolero. It is. It's all included. So you can you could make the bolero in the satin as well, in the duchess satin. Yeah. Or you go a bit fun and go with your, your sequin. Oh, it does you never have too much sequin. And there's lots of options with the pattern as well, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, I'll talk you through it. You've got the one we're doing today is this simple one, and it's just an, a straight hem that we've gone for. But you've also got a longer hem at the back, You've got one where you've got um, like a flounce So you've done this just it. as a straight we round We just hem. went straight with this but one. But you could do this that it has a slight sort of train at the back. And then you've got this one where you can add a flounce in as well. So you've got that fullness. Yeah. So in this heavier fabric would give you that really lovely shape oh, that wow. just comes out at the bottom, which is really nice. And then you've got two different options then for your bolero. So you've got your short sleeve which is not obviously just, just scooping your shoulders. Yeah. And then the front one, this one here, actually does up on the front and it's got your long, long sleeves. Long sleeves, which so is you lovely could for winter, do isn't it? A long sleeve one like this or a short short sleeve version like that, etc. So you can mix and match your your patterns. I think coming up to prom season and wedding season and party yeah. cocktail dresses, yeah. this is going to be so popular. And styles like this don't date, do they? No, you can wear something like this again and again yeah. and if they get that fit right and then you can make them and you can just keep changing the different parts to it then as well and change up your accessories. I think when you've got a plain satin and mm -hmm. a duchess satin, it's, I think it's how you accessorise it is the lovely thing as Absolutely. well. So keep it clean and simple and then go to town with all your bits on top, your bolero, your jewellery, your bag. How, so is the, um, how is the Duchess satin to work with? It's great. I love Duchess satin. I work, yeah. obviously I do bridal wear. Yeah. So this is something I work in a lot. I love the weight of it. So you've got your, it's easy to work with because it's, it doesn't move. Yeah. So, you know, when you've got your really fine silk that will kind of move a little bit more, but your Duchess you've satin has got yeah. structure. Yeah. You can iron it and it will just oh, hold its shape beautifully as well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a pretty good one. And I think you've, it just allows you to have just that shape without anything clinging yeah. as well, which yeah. is really good. It's really so I'm lovely. always a fan of Duchess satin. I think it's, it's great. We've had a message off. Who, sorry, Paul? Jacqueline. She says, I'm making a mode of a bride, bride outfit for August. Yeah. She's asking about the boning of Oh, this. yes, we'll do a little bit on the boning. Yeah, we've got it, and we're going to yeah. go through all yeah, of that Yeah, we'll make sure we go through a little bit on boning. So this is yeah. where the boning is, is that right? It's, this one actually isn't over the bust. It's just under the side here. Right. And then in the back seam as oh, well. So it's completely sort of hidden. It's really hidden. And yeah. when I do boning in, in pieces, I do do a piece on the bust. So you can always add that if you yeah. want, and you can have that shaping there. Um, and I usually put it sides, bust, in the back so everything just to keep that support yeah. around the top we are going to go through this in complete detail so don't worry but there it is anyway this is the boning it's three pounds 49 
uh, for the reel, but we will go through all of that throughout the yeah. show. Right, so what okay. is it that we're going to be able to show today? A couple of things we're going to go through. Um, I suppose I'll go through just quickly the usual thing with picking your size. I know yeah. you said that if you are bordering on the size maybe 12, yeah. but you might be a 14, go for the larger sizes yeah. because you can always take it in. It's always easier to do that than it is to actually Absolutely. make the pattern bigger. And you'd always, always take it in on the sides. Okay. So something with this which is nice and straightforward, there's no fastening in the side, that if it is slightly too big for you when you put it on, that's where you take it in. Perfect. So it's nice and easy. So go for your bigger size and... What we're going to do is just have a little look at, I cut everything out and just look at where we're, all the little markings that we're going right. to just make sure are on there. So there's, I know I've gone through bits before about reading the pattern and laying out, etc. So, you know, if anyone does need any help with that, just get in touch. But what we'll do today is we're just going to have a look at marking the darts on the front and the back. Then I'm going to show you how to put the zip in on the back as well. Brilliant. And then we'll do a little bit on the boning. So hopefully you'll cover all all options for you all so we have the back bit I open this out for you when you're cutting something like a duchess satin layer up your fabric so you've got your right sides together okay and then you can make sure that everything's straight your edges are straight it's not it won't move too much which is quite nice with this but you do need to make sure that you keep everything pinned mm -hmm. don't take off your pattern pieces until you've marked all your bits that you need because it's really important that you've got your notches you mark in where the base of the zip is and you're marking your darts right okay so pin it cut it i do cut with the roller cutter on the mats yeah. when i do these which is a little bit easier with the satin so the less movement off the better so when you're cutting you do tend to lift some of your fabric so pin this really well so your layers don't move and then you can roller cut it's only since i've around. watched the great british sewing bee actually that i still dress makers using a rotary yeah. cutter i didn't realize a lot of people don't is... yeah don't realize that you can but I, i've got six big um yeah. mats at home and that so everything is cut out using those and then mm. nipping in with your scissors where you need them yeah. But it's, yeah it's good i love it so what we have on here to mark and you'll see on the pattern there's an option there for, uh, for D where you've got that drop down hem on the back. And the other bits we need to mark on here then are just your notches. So we've got a triple notch on the back. So you'll always have that on a back seam yeah. or anything of here, three notches. Then you'll have your two notches on the side seam. So that's quite universal. Yeah, with everything. You always have three in the back, two on the side. And then the other bit we have then is this is really important to just mark where your, your zip stops so I mark it with a small notch level to that so I know where to actually sew up to when we do the zip okay just to mark where the darts are we have got very small circles either side here so there's lots of ways of doing it I know um, a lot of people say quite old school will do your tailor tack. tack so if you're used to that stick with it I do it quickly and I've, again I've had this discussion before saying because I, I work quite quickly it's just the nature of what I do you know you do things sometimes a bit quicker than maybe you know others so I pin everything if you're not happy with this then you can just tail attack can you so, pin this yeah you can pin all of this it what I would do when you're cutting it out on the front just to show you this the front is positioned on the fold I'll show you the dart on this as well so on the fold I wouldn't recommend pinning all the way down here because right. you don't really want to pin on the satin although it is a good one where you know an iron will get out okay. if you've got good sharp pins yeah don't try and force a pin through if it's if it's not going because it may snag right. a little bit so make sure you've got nice sharp pins and then you can just avoid pinning down the center front but pin all the way around and keep your pins within your seam allowance mm -hmm. so then there's no marking in the dress and also when you pin up your uh, darts I've just put a pin inside within the dart right so again it's just not pinning where you may see a pin mark because it could show but this fabric will be fine you can just iron it out so what we'll do is keep everything pinned around the outside and the way I do the darts is I put a pin through each small circle so I just put that through and just poke it right through to the back not so worried about these two because it is a straight line up to those there if it was curved I'd also mark those those in there there's a slight curve around here so we'll mark these two as well 
Have you been watching? Yeah. Did you watch The Great British Sober? I did, I did. I was about a week behind each time though, because I just couldn't watch it on the night. So have you watched but the final? I have, yeah. yes. Yeah, it was really good. It was really nice to, to just see the dressmaking side of things yeah. and to see the evening wear. And, yeah. Oh, I loved it. And it's great because everyone's just so friendly on there as well. Oh. It's that lovely camaraderie between everyone, That's which it. I love. And everyone helps everyone, which is nice. So it's a really nice, nice industry to be in. I really love it. So we have these pins that we'll take out now that will release around the edge of the pattern. What I have pre-done is just cut two little notches mm -hmm. at the top of the dart there as well. So if we peel all of this off, making sure you don't peel those pins out with your paper. Oh, that's really good. Good idea. And so where those pins have gone in are where the circles are. Perfect. So when we do match this all up to sew, and you match up your circles, we're just going to match up where the pins go along here. So I'll show you how I do it on here. That's really nice and quick and easy, isn't it? It is. You make sure that you don't then leave this. Mm -hmm. Say you are cutting everything out, I would just anchor your pins pointing into the dart so you don't lose them. So say now I was going to then cut out the front pieces. Yeah. Don't leave them hanging like that because they right, are going yeah. to come out. So anchor them in. But when you're ready, you can pull them back out. And again, this is a method that I do, so it's, you know, it's my own way. So don't worry if you do it differently. And what I then do is just pull apart the pieces. And I just put a pin in the other side then. Where that pin has gone through. That's so it's where the pin it, has yeah. gone in is marking that yeah. centre bit. So again, I'll pull those apart and anchor those in. Just saves hand sewing, saves you tacking if you're not a fan of it, which I know not everyone is. So again, we'll do the same thing on this side. Pull this apart. I bet this is the time of year then you get busy, isn't it, with all of your... Oh my gosh, I'm flat imagine. out at the moment. There's so much, so many weddings and, yeah. well, you'll know, you're you know, one of the brides-to-be. Oh, it's, it's so uh, manic, isn't it? It's just a busy time of year and the planning for yourself. So even though it's, um, obviously the wedding season hasn't come about, it's that prep. Yeah, that's which it. Which is when I'm busy. Yeah. Which is what everything you're doing now for yours and planning all yeah. your flowers and bridesmaids. And oh, there's so much. And things like this, good. dresses, they are so expensive. If you go to, um, you know, anywhere, if you go into Selfridges or if you go into House of Fraser and you look at evening wear, like the dress that Helen's made here, you can pay so much yeah. and you still might mm. need to have it altered. Exactly. And so to be able to create one yourself that's Definitely. fit, bespoke to you, it's just brilliant. And you don't have the worry of, somebody else going to be wearing it no and exactly and you can really personalize it yeah and there are so many great patterns out as well and, and if you find something you love then you can start to adapt them a little bit well, that's what i love about this actually yeah. it's a great a blank canvas heart. isn't it yeah so that then you can adapt like you say you yeah could change just the very easily just do a little sweetheart neckline there which isn't on the pattern but you could just yeah. Just that little bit of shaping or just soften it and then already you're changing the neckline which will yeah. be... And again unabstract. embellish, you can put like your little Schwarzkis yeah. round or... Belt around, belt, a little yeah. sash or bow, brooch on a sash, yeah. anything. Little flowers. Straps, or, everything. It. So you know, when it's you've really got the basics... Base, that's it. Exactly right. So I'm going to put this to one side for a second so I'll just sew the one dart on here. This is so beautiful, honestly. You will love this fabric as well. It is lovely. So we've got on the back of the fabric, so as you were saying, the shiny side with Duchess satin is always the right side. So this side I wouldn't necessarily use. I mean, it does look fine, but it's meant to be the shiny side right. for this okay. fabric. There are some, there's a satin back crepe where you can use both sides. Right, okay. So that's one which I use a lot, a bit more of a drape to yeah. it then. What we'll do, where these pins are, I'm just going to just release them. So I've still got where the pin has gone in is where the circle is on the pattern. And I'm just going to just come over with this pin and just poke it through where that other pin is. So I'm hoping you can see that. Yeah, we've okay. got that. And then I'm going to release that one, pull it nice and tight. And now you've got those two circles are exactly matched up. Perfect. So pull your fabric together and just, again, anchor your pin in. I'm going to do the same on these here. Again, where your pin has gone in is the hole. You want to just take it over, pierce it where the other pin has gone in. That one drops out. And again, pull it nice 
and tight so those fabrics are really nice and close there. Anchor that pin in. And then the other one down here, oops, again you want to just pull that out. And that is the base of your dart. Mm -hmm. So what you can then do is just make sure your fabric is folded on that point. And again, you can just put that pin, just replace it in. So you will go into the fabric there. So you right. do need to just bear in mind that if you have got, again, a pin that isn't so sharp, it may catch it. So just make sure they're super, super sharp when using satin. And on the top then, where those two little notches were for the top of the dart, we'll put a pin in just to keep those in line there. So you've got the top there. You then know that you're going to sew from those notches to that point of the pin, to that point, and down to the bottom. So you can iron that and put a few more in okay. if you want to just keep it nice and flat. I'll just draw on with the ruler, which I buried somewhere over here. And what marking tool do you use on satin? Um, a mixture of things. I never use any erasable pens. No, I just, even though Taylor's you can, or... they're totally fine. But it's just a bit of a thing with me. I just, I, I just worry that yeah. something might happen. It's just a, they're totally yeah. fine. Um, I tend to use chalk, or I don't do many darts actually on bridal yeah. though. I tend to put them into the seams. But if I did, I'd use a chalk okay. inside, so I wouldn't mark the outside. So this then, we're going to just line up from the base of the dart up to where that pin goes in. Now this isn't sharp, sorry, so I didn't sharpen it, but at least you can see where that line goes there. Then I'm going to the next point. So we're going from circle to circle along there. And then we're matching up the top then, which is where your notches were. And that now is the dart that you need to sew. So when you're sewing a dart, you need to ideally start at the top here if you start here where you're just on the edge of the fabric, the teeth are only catching a bit of your fabric. Okay. So it's better to start where the, the dog teeth underneath can catch all of your fabric and you'll be able to aim then to come down to the point. And when you get down to the point, you can just reverse on it. If you've been doing it uh, regularly and, and you know, don't worry too much, but you can either just reverse on the point or reverse up onto the fold slightly, okay. a couple of millimetres, and that will reduce any little pucker in at the bottom. Could you do um, like a lock-in stitch? Yeah, you could do. Yeah. yeah. And it's just a good iron is what you need. But just make sure you don't stop shy of the fold, yeah. because that's when you, you will get, right get that a little bit. You do want to go right up to that fold. Point. If anything, run it off slightly and do your reverse, okay. but a little bit. So I'll sew this bit so you can see how this looks. Now, do you need any particular needle or any setting when you work with satin? Sharp needles. Yeah. Again, just sharp. So change your needle. If you're doing anything with satin, I'd always put a brand new needle in if yeah. you're doing it. Something like this, a size 12 is fine. If you go in finer fabrics, I, I'd use a 10 for okay. certain ones. But with this, because it's quite thick, you probably want a size 12 yeah. just to be able to get it through. And it's, yeah. you know, when it's going through a few layers, that's my main thing. Um, matching thread, but we're going for bright pink today, just so you, so can, you see. can see. So you can see. Okay, <laughs> so don't judge my colour or <laughs> colour choice here. Um, but no, there's nothing, nothing you really need to do with it, but just... And like you say, it's not a silky, slippy, slippy satin, isn't it? No. Quite nice to, to sew with. I'm just going to put my stitch length slightly longer. Oh, and my speed, I was like, I'm going very slow. So you aim to get to where that pin was, and then just so I don't break the needle, I'm just going to wind to that. Just take that pin out. Then carry on down here. If you feel when you're making the first one that you might want to take it in a little bit more, you can make your dart bigger. Right. So just follow the lines of the shaping on the pattern and where it's widest, then you can just take a bit more in there. We're going to stay with Helen, by the way, so we get load, lots of these different tips. We've got about 20 minutes with you. Real. Okay, oops, didn't cut that. And then which way do you press your darts? The kind of rule is press them to the back okay. on your outside fabric, yeah. but you may want to, on your inside and your lining, press them to the front so that they're not Nettling, doubling up. Yeah. So with this, then, what you would do is you would just press that to the back, which is that bit. So I would just iron that from this side, like that, right. and then from the front, don't be afraid to iron onto the fabric, oh, really? but only on two. 
Okay, just okay. on a, a really low heat. Yeah, don't put it on any more than two. Okay. But that, for most things, you don't need it more than two anyway. Or could you use a pressing cloth if you're You could do, sure, but you, you can go clean on Clean iron. Yeah, I clean do, iron. so I will just iron it flat. Any steam? A little bit of steam, but be careful. You might get this mark in through, so you only really want to just just press it so this is nice and flat So you've just got to here. be careful you don't get too much water on, yeah. well, any water. If you get water on it, put your iron on without the steam and just keep it on until that water gets evaporated. Okay. If you leave the water on, it might leave a stain. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what we'll do now is, I was just going to show you on the front as well, actually. I won't sew the dart on this one. It's a slightly different one on the front where you actually have to cut along a slash line to be able to match this up because it's quite a curved um, kind of shaped dart here. So just want to show you when you do pin everything flat, do the same with your pins or your tailor tacks on all of those points. What you will need to do is get your rotary cutter and you will need to just cut along that slash line. So you can just cut it or you can use the scissors and you cut it right down to where the end of that little arrow is. So if you need to just use your scissors for the last bit, oh, I'm pressed very well there, then you can just snip with the end there to the right. And that then, it looks a bit scary when you open it up, but yeah. you will just match up again all of those points. Right. So you just fold it over, match all your points, and just twist it round as it goes and just pin it really well. Okay. Okay, so that's that dart. So we're not going to worry about the front for sex. I want to show you how to do the back. Uh, Lorraine just asked a question about the darts. Morning girls, love the dress. I'd love to be able to make it. Can you make the darts like that on any dress pants? Yeah, yeah. Some patterns will have darts and some might have that shaping within the seams. Right. So you just need to make sure that you know where, yeah. um, where the shaping is. Now, all I'm finding on here is the back, centre back seam. Now I'm marking where the circle was at the base of the zip and I'm just going to pin this really quickly down here because you need to sew from the bottom up to your base of the zip. I'm going to do that quick and then I'm going to show you the overlocker. Just We've a quick update by the way on the um, fabric, the most popular one is the jade. Oh, I love the jade. Oh, I, you said about gorgeous. red hair. I, I've always been a bit of a red head, and yeah. I think I'm going to go back to it soon. And I had that colour for my brother's wedding. Oh, did it? I had, so gorgeous. Because I had so a pair striking. of shoes in that colour. And I'll so the whole the outfit was based on that pair of shoes to match it, and then I made a little bolero in the same colour. Oh, I need Fab. to show you. It's so nice. This colour's amazing. I'm sure my mum had um, uh, a dress made out of this sort of colour and it was so expensive. It was an LK Bennett dress and it was, again, it just, it's such a designer yeah, looking colour, it. isn't it? I love that. So centimetre and a half seam it's allowance right. for everything as well. Oh, what, sorry? So centimetre and a half centimetre seam allowance. Centimetre and a half. Also, oh, it's got quite a nice seam allowance yeah, as well. Yeah, so absolutely. Okay. Nice and generous. So if it is slightly too small, you can let it out. But what I'm also going to do now is from that point of the base of the zip, I'm going to make the stitch length really long, so just a tack in stitch. And we just sew up. So you've gone up to the a five. rest of the top. Yeah, really long. I don't usually do this kind of zip in a dress. I usually do concealed zips. Yeah. But this is quite a nice finish actually Let me on this one. Show you the zip on this. Yeah, it is a lovely finish actually. Do you have an iron? I'm going to overlock yes. this and then I'm going to just iron it flat. Plug it Brilliant. In. You're going to the overlocker first? Yes, okay. I'll do that first while it warms up. So we've just sewn all the way along, bottom up to the base of the zip, then made the stitch length longer, and now I'm just going to overlock each side separately, just to neaten it. So even though it's lined, mm -hmm. this will fray a little bit, so it's best if you can overlock. And your overlock just gives you that professional finish where you can put it in the wash, not worry about it. This is our most Correct. affordable overlocker, actually, and it's been so popular. Neil came in on the 50 from Britannia to talk about it, and it is such great value for money. It still has the little box which will grab all of your loose ends. Well, it's great. Well, actually, before we came on air, we were just getting the settings right, and I didn't realise that you can switch it from a normal overlock to a roll hem with just one little switch, which oh, is great. Oh, it was my old one. I have to change the whole plate. Oh, no way. 
away. Perfect. That's really good. Good, yeah. And there's a little switch on the side that will engage or disengage the blade yeah. as well. Yeah, all really straightforward. Yeah. Bear in mind, I've never used it before. We worked it out in two minutes. Oh, so brilliant. <laughs> so it's it looks lovely in the green, doesn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't normally go for a green. We've gone for a contrast again, just so you can see. It does just add those really professional finishes, doesn't it, it when does. you're doing evening wear especially. Absolutely. I use just my overlocker for everything. It's, you know, when you first get your head around it, the threading can be a little bit mm -hmm. hard work at first. Um, but so like I run little overlocker workshops just for how to thread your overlocker up. But so there's really plenty of people will do that. That's it. Isn't it it, it is one of those um, things that once you know how to do it, then you're fine. But somebody yeah. said even if you just snip your thread and tie the tie next ones on, on and yeah. run it through. So much easier. Yeah. yeah. Or just pull them through. So if it runs through and comes undone, then you've got to start all over again. Yeah. But when you know how to thread from scratch, then they're not quite so scary. Right. Because then all of the visuals that are telling you what to do suddenly become Come. much more yeah. clear. But yeah, find someone that local that can just give you a run through on your overlocker and then you'll, you'll be set then. Because it, it does open up so many possibilities, doesn't it, when you're yeah. working with jersey? Oh, I know, oh. I know. I, I don't really use, utilise mine as well as I should. Oh, it is great for just constructing garments so quickly. Yeah. So you can see, I just do little bursts, lots of short bursts, to just make sure that there's nothing underneath. Because I learnt my lesson when I was doing my GCSEs years and years ago. And cut a bit of my fabric right at the end of like my garment. Oh, no. I've never done it since. So, so you have to almost make that mistake. Yeah, you'll never do that's it again. It. Brilliant. Okay, so I just need to iron this nice and flat. I'll swap the cutting mat. Excellent. Over. Thank you. Now it would have been ideal. What I'd normally do is overlock before. Sorry, press before overlocking. Right. Thank you. Just because you might see the overlocking coming through. So everything, every time you sew a seam with dressmaking, always press it straight away. So then you've got a nice press from inside. Now these don't look particularly level here. It's really highlighting my whizzing through. I'm gonna use a bit of steam as well. But always press everything. So okay. if you're the kind of person that makes a garment and you press at the end, you will find it a lot harder to be doing that. So it is much, much easier to press every seam as you go. Use the point of your iron to just open up your seam and always use your steam as well. I won't worry going to the bottom for a sec. I love how well this actually presses. Oh, it's this beautiful. Is fine. And that was one of nice my that. biggest worries at the start. Oh, that looks lovely. And I'll do the, the dart actually while I'm here now. So I'll press the dart. To the back. pull this and just press it to the back. Oh, it's so satisfying, isn't it, when you see it all pressed beautifully. So press it from the inside and then go to the outside, which seems a bit daunting. I'll do it this way. But about 12 minutes just, with you. Okay, great. I'm gonna, before I do the zip, I'm going to show you about the boning yeah. first, just so that I can just do however much with the zip then, I think. But that is what you want, to get that nice and flat at the bottom. That's perfect. <laughs> You can see it's just almost invisible. Oh my word. How long have you been doing evening wear? How long have you been so? Oh, for years. But I specialised in bridal right. about six years or so ago. And, yeah. and it's, I, it's, I'm one of those strange ones. I've always loved satin. Yeah. Even though it's one of the hard fabrics, but it's just my thing. Right, it's a bit of water on there. So, what I would do straight away, don't leave it. Just keep the iron on top until oh, it goes. That's and good. it will go. Yeah. Because, yeah, water stains are. Top yes. tip, there you go. Yeah, and as you can see, this is quite good to show you why I'd usually press before overlocking. You can see a little hint of the overlocking coming through there. So that's well, why... Well, you can, I can't, that's Always really... press your seams before you overlock. Okay. And then if you do want to get rid of that, you can just come back in and just press underneath. And that should get rid of that line. Oh, amazing. And then, then it's gone on that side. Oh, I love it. It's so really lots of tips just with that yes. area, just for this. Now, before we do the zip, I just want to talk you through the boning so then I can, just to say, just take my time with the zip and see how much That's we it. get done. Okay, That's so good. Um, this boning, like you say, it's already um, sort of in a sleeve, is it? Yes, it is. So you have... If, I, if I'll take this away for a yeah. sec, actually, and then hopefully... 
I think it's the first time, it is the first time we've ever had bowling here. Um, yeah, well, it's brilliant, isn't it? Because it does, again, open up so many possibilities. Bowling, I use for lots and lots of projects. You don't have to think of bowling as being something that's going to suddenly make your garment like stiff, stiff to wear right. or uncomfortable. What you have with this, it's a, a plastic. So if I pull this, it's a plastic, what's called Rigeline underneath there. So it is very flexible. So you can bend it quite easily there. Right. So even though it kind of comes coiled like this, it will then just start to mould to your shape. Okay. So when you when you do cut it and you do place it in, if you feel like it's kind of like that, you think, well, that's going to be a bit a bit uncomfortable because it's so soft, it will just mould with you. So you won't have anything digging into you right. because you can see how easy it is to mould. But Brilliant. it will keep that shape and keep it nice and straight. So on your your pieces, what you actually create inside your garment is this is one of the lining pieces and you actually create um, almost like a little inside version of the dress but just a, like a crop kind of version of it so you've got your front you've got your side panel and then you've got your back piece you do need to add in a little dart here in the back piece so you would do exactly what we did on the front there mm -hmm. and you would just mark all your pieces your pins, and yeah. then just actually fold this up and create your, your dart. So again, keep all your pattern pieces handy because you will also need to know where to position your bone in. So I'll leave that on there for a sec. The bit where we can show you now is where to put your bone in. So if I place this maybe on top of the white so you can see a bit better, is on your pattern piece, it will say everything, the usual notches, bust notches are really important just to help you mm -hmm. fit all mm -hmm. of that shaping in. You've got your two notches for the side again. And what you have got is one line down the center called your placement line. And this is for your boning. So it tells you to cut your boning the length of the line between the two circles. So roll this out and then just position it on there. And the reason why it's that length is because that's in your seam allowance then. Yes. You don't want to have this in your seam allowance because it's going to be really difficult to work with. So you make sure you can mark about the cut. Don't use your best scissors for this bit. But you do just cut it with a pair of old scissors. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got your, your Rigeline inside, but you also have the option to make it a little bit shorter there as well. So if you want, rather than having that right on the seam allowance where it may push down, mm -hmm. it does say to cut a little bit off. So once you have cut it the right length, you can pull this back and then just cut off what you need. It says about, I think, two centimetres from what I remember. And then you can just fold that back up and do the same on the other end then as well. Now, when I do the bridal side, I use the Rigeline by itself, so I don't have a casing on okay. it, but this is lovely to have this yeah. on. And if you are using that by yourself or you're worried that it might be a bit sharp, then you can burn it with the, like a little gas lighter okay. and that will just melt the ends so they're not quite so rough. Right. So if you've got a really fine fabric and you're not going to necessarily um, have this cover on, melt it and then you can always sew it, like either put a cap on, because mm -hmm. you can buy the Rigeline caps, or sew a bit of fabric over. But this is, is like luxurious, yeah. this. By having it covered already <laughs> yeah. is perfect. So what you do then is position this on so your pattern piece goes back on. I'm going to use one of the erasable pens. I'm just going to mark bottom there and the top. And I'm just going to draw a line down there. And then all you do with your Rigeline I'll just mark actually the bottom for the placement as well. Mark that little circle on there. And all you do then is just position your Rigeline on the inside where your facing is. Mm -hmm. And then you just start sewing all the way up the edge on straight stitch. Sew across the top, sew the wall all the way down the other side. And you put your zipper bottom. foot on or no you can just you sit just straight sew. onto it ah, so i'll do it quick to show you now but, but that's how simple minutes. it is oh great <laughs> i hope they get a bit of the zip done as well then so place it on the bottom make sure you put it on the inside so where your interfacing is and we've got it on nice and long anyway which is good 
So if you are going to stitch on top, you could like, maybe put an old needle in or a spare needle because you are going through your plastic as well. Yeah. Oops, a bit far there. You are just going either side, nothing fancy, just enough to, to, to secure it on. Sew across the bottom bits as well. And then that means there's no vigiline going anywhere. It's not going out at all. And that is all you're doing See, on there. See, it's a lot, actually, it's a lot Super easier than easy. you think. So they're sitting, the bones that you've got in here are... Yeah, I might, shall I show you? Shall yeah. I take this off? So on the back, what you have is your rigoline is inside there. So oh. you have a layer with your interfacing on. Yeah. You cut another layer of this with just your lining and you sew these together. So they actually create these two separate layers mm -hmm. here and they get attached on the top of the dress and then hand stitched up the inside. It so is So it's beautiful. a whole different layer <sighs> inside your dress oh because it's all fully lined as well isn't yeah, it yeah fully it lined it's such a beautiful dress so we've got a, a couple of minutes if we could Great, just I'm show you whiz around the zip yeah i'll give you that to put thank back you. on thank you so hopefully that's enough for you for now now my zip so back to this point where you have your nicely pressed open zip yeah put it this way around so you can see and you actually place your zip face on allow for the seam allowance on the top here so don't don't feel you need to put the top of the zip the zipper itself there because you always need to think there is a seam allowance yeah. so I'd actually lower this down and what the pattern on here says to do is to position your teeth right on the center of the seam so which is why it's got you to tack this this seam up the back get those teeth positioned right on that center seam This isn't a concealed zip, though. No, no, this is a normal zip. I don't do it this way, not that I do this zip often, but I've seen it um, being suggested on patterns, and it's actually quite nice, because yeah. I was a bit, oh, give it a go, see how neat it is. We do have concealed zips, I think, so if you, want to, if you prefer it with a concealed zip... I love a concealed zip. But it's, yeah, it's one of those things where this is nice and straightforward, because it's in the pattern. Yeah. So when you've got that, then you can actually do your zipper up, it does say to tack one side and then do up and do the other. But once you've got those teeth lined up exactly in the centre, then you can just go up this side as well. And I'm pinning all the way through the fabric to the front as well. It's actually so much sort of... Um I, I thought that this was going to be a really uh, a fabric that you only work with if you're very far. Oh you? no, everyone's it's scared brilliant, of isn't silk. It? Yeah. Everyone's scared of satin and they was going, you must be mad to work in it. But I, I love it. Yeah. I love when you've got a firm satin like this, then it's, you know, it will keep its shape and a really soft one will just drape beautifully. So we're going to tack the zip in. So I might just tack the one side to show you. I folded a length of thread in half with a loop at the end and you thread both ends then through the eye of the needle. So I can do that today. Whoops. Yeah, we've literally got about a minute. Okay, <gasps> I'll just talk Sorry. you through yeah. then. Yeah, have threaded it, today. but never mind. So what you would do is you would then tack all the way down here, across and back up. Mind that metal bit if you've got a metal bit on a zip. And then what you do is from the right side, you would then just sew all the way down the edge and you sew across at the base of the zip and all the way back up to the top and what you would need to bear in mind is you've got that bit there which is yeah. always a little bit lumpy so you need to just almost allow for that you can't normally if you're doing a zip you can almost like undo the zipper yeah, so yeah. you don't kind of have to go That's around it. it but because this is tacked we can't get to that zipper so you will need to allow i think i've one here i've just started slightly wider and just gone in but you yeah. can keep it that same width all the way down if you prefer but what you're trying to do is make sure that when you're sewing down you've got an equal distance either side of the zip square across at the bottom come back up and then your zip is hidden 
underneath there. It is lovely detail actually, it adds a really nice aesthetic finish to it's it. It's a really nice like finish. It. All you do then is when you have done that with your zip, yeah. you then just use your pick or your scissors just to just undo that, that. And it really is a beautiful finish. It's lovely. Thank you so, so much. I'm sorry okay. it was a flying... I know, it's, I would like to cover as much as I can. Yeah, so. absolutely. Loads and loads of tips. And we've got a lovely bag which will go beautifully with oh, this yes. actually. Evening bag coming up with Helen in about an hour. So thank yeah. you very, very much. No worries. See you then. See you later. Okay. I'm going to take the fabric and the boning with me. So, let's start with the pattern. The pattern comes in two different sizes from 6 to, to uh, 12 and then 14 to 20. Uh, it is an absolute beauty, beauty of a dress. I love the different variations. So, you've got the option that you can have just the, the, um, the plain sort of hem or you could have it with a little train or you can have the flouncy bottom you could also have the bolero it's got the option of the the longer sleeve and the the bolero that does up at the front as well so it's a really lovely versatile pattern and if you are starting out uh trying to do a bit of evening wear then this is a really good staple because then you can add straps you could embellish away you could put a sweetheart neckline there's as helen was explaining there's lots of variations that you're going to be able to do with this pattern this is your six to twelve um I think the most that you're going to need is uh, three and a half metres. If you want to have a closer look at the back of the pattern to work out how much fabric you're going to need, go to the second photograph online. Um, the other pattern, oh, if you're getting excited about doing some um, evening wear, <gasps> this is like dancing on ice. Oh, my word. Right, so we've got two different sizes, 14 to 22 first. Look at these. That is gorgeous. Can you imagine this with the sequin brand new fabric that we've got? With the, um, the rose, oh my word. Or even with the rose at the top and then the satin at the bottom. Oh my word, that would look stunning. Brand new pattern. We've also got it in size 6 to 14. Have you got anybody that's got their prom coming up? How beautiful are these? Again, for bride's dresses. That's even like a bride's fishtail dress, isn't it? Oh! <gasps> amazing it is amazing again once again you've got all of the um, details on the back of your different sizing and how much fabric you're going to need and the different variations if you want to add a bow if you want it with the belt if you want the sweetheart neckline that's amazing I love this pattern okay now we didn't mention earlier on about the linings so they're really nice aren't they the linings it's fully lined. This is the lining that Helen used with the um, rose dress. So obviously you want one that's going to sort of complement. This one is to go with that lovely rose, which is that one. That's your light cream. Um, we've then got jade or turquoise to go with your jade. It's 100% polyester. Do you know what the width of it is? 148 wide, anti-static, half a metre is £1.49. The next one we've got is the violet. Again, to go with the lovely purple. See, look, that looks blue on screen, doesn't it? It's absolutely purple, purple. I don't know whether my monitor's just a bit um, saturated. Maroon. Is this one, the one that Helen was working with? Oh, it started to look gorgeous, didn't it? All coming together, it looks so, so plush. And I think going to go with every sort of age and, um, and skin tone. And quite often, you know, when you see sort of bridesmaids dresses, they're all the same. You almost can tell exactly where it's from. You just know. I love this. I had um, a dress when I went to Ascot uh, a couple of years ago, and the dress was just uh, made from this one. Oh, sorry, the lining, pale blue to go with that pale blue satin is this one so you could do a really lovely flouncy skirt and have it fully lined all the dress that we've done would look beautiful in this color as well one pound 49 for the lining okay neil came in from britannia to talk to us about the overlocker if you are looking at evening wear or in fact dressmaking in general this will add a really great professional finish to your garments it's really quick and easy to construct garments but also will finish them off beautifully so we've got a bit more information up to uh, 1300 stitches a minute easy threading we talked about the threading process being quite daunting with overlocking it's got an easy threading lower looper built-in rolled hem and you can change that with a switch of a button as Helen 
style and um, as explained. Also looper threaded. You've got your free arm, which is unusual actually. Some of the more expensive machines don't have that. So you can actually take that free arm away to do your sleeves or to do, uh, you know, if you're constructing bags with those lockers as well, it's brilliant. So you have got that free arm. Um, adjustable pressure foot, uh, adjustable presser foot pressure differential feed which again you can change just from the dials on the side it has a two-year warranty uh, you can also adjust the stitch width and stitch length on the um, on the side on the dials you get all of those accessories included with your machine your tweezers your machine oil your thread net your spool cap your accessory box your soft cover your cleaning brush screwdriver everything you're going to need 269.99 it is fantastic value for money isn't it if you are looking at overlockers you'll notice that that is actually one of the most affordable ones that i've seen and it's by no means um a, a basic machine it does everything that you want it to do it's fantastic okay should we go through these fabrics oh no we haven't got time um so if you want any of these fabrics they're all underneath us online they're absolutely amazing these blushes are gorgeous the sparkly blue as well uh we're coming back in just a couple of minutes though oh, also the boning if you wanted that that's underneath us on the web as well as well as everything that you've seen this hour so make the most of that do not go anywhere though because after the break liberty lovers you're in for a treat we've got a whole hour of some beautiful alice caroline kits coming up right after this I'm eating so much cake and I'm so upset with myself. I'm literally just eating so much. And Chris said, are you eating more cake? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's Bex's birthday, though, so we have to buy all, eat all the cake. You haven't eaten any. Well done, Chris. Chris is doing so well. He's doing dry April and he's not eating any cake. It is only 11 o'clock. He, um, <laughs> he will have some by 1 o'clock, surely. Right. So, it's our how-to series, and it's the finale. It is the finale. So, we had to do some really, really gorgeous projects. And, of course, the perfect person, Helen Rhiannon, is here to show us some great tips. We learned so much in that first hour of beautiful dressmaking um, evening wear. So, we need an evening bag, don't we? We need an evening bag to go with our lovely dress that we've made. This is so gorgeous. It's a Lisa Lamb design. As far as I'm aware, this is brand new today. Ooh. I don't think this has been on air before, has it? Nope, never. Brand new pattern, brand new bag. It's really lovely. And do you know what? It's a really nice size. It's actually deceivingly big. Um, it's still a really nice size that you're going to be able to fit, you know, your phone, maybe a bit of makeup, your, a bit of money. Essentials that you need when you're off to a, a special occasion or event. The kit that you are getting is very, very generous, just so you know. When you've got this, we're thinking, maybe you want to make them for bridesmaids and they all have little matching bags. Or if you want to make them for, for again, again and again and again, if you do want to make multiple bags, the kits are very, very generous. You're going to be able to, with the fabric that's included, make quite a few of these. Um, so let's start with the blue one because this is the blue that we're looking at, which is, again, this lovely satin finish. Um, it's royal blue. You get both the satin and you get the lining as well so the the satin let me show you bearing in mind you can see the size of the purse you can see the size of the little clutch bag um look at how much fabric you get half a meter of this you're going to be able to make well at least two three in fact helen's going to me low you can make loads look at how much and the pattern pieces will go through with helen as well um you're going to be able to absolutely indulge 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 you could even probably make with it could you make like a little you've got your bag and a little shawl or something that's a good idea isn't it or a little purse as well i mean there's so many ideas so there's the blue you also get half a meter of your anti-static lining which is um goes inside the bag obviously you then get your thread and you get your lovely frame. Does the frame, have we got the um, little handles, the strap, is it separate? Okay, we can show you that in a bit because we are gonna offer separately as well the strap, which you can have these tabs 
tucked in out the way if you do want it as like a little purse or have them out if you want to attach the chain. So they're not just going to sit out there, if you know what I mean. Um, you also get your full instructions by Lisa Lamb. There's your whole kit for £24.99. It's lovely. And again, we talked about with this with the dress, you could embellish, you could do some embroidery, you could stick some diamonds. There's so much that you're going to be able to do. Personalise it. The next one's the purple. And it's that lovely, rich, regal purple. Once again, beautiful satin. Are these new fabrics? That perfect purple. That is really deep, rich, intense purple. Your purple duchess satin. So it's not as... Uh, it's still got structure to it, which I think is needed with a bag like this. It's If it was, you know, that silky, very soft satin, it would just absolutely flop. Whereas, obviously, this is... Um, got your H640 and got your interfacing to give it a bit more stability but the Duchess satin itself has got lots of body and great structure like we saw earlier on with the dress so you also have <laughs> it also has your static lining most popular so far lots going into baskets Paul is this new £23.99 for your Duchess satin amazing isn't it let's do the turquoise velvet that comes with a different um, clasp by the way there's the difference with the sort of antique brass and then this one is your um, your silver okay turquoise look at this this is completely different so these both are velvet um, this is that turquoise velvet which is again so plush that's got to be new I've never seen this before it's gorgeous Oh, let's have a look at how much half a metre is because, again, how many bags are you going to be able to make with this? Oh, my word, it's so wide. <laughs> that is so, so wide. This has been on uh, once before by the half metre, I believe. It's brand new to me. I love it. <gasps> I would definitely um, make the most of that. See, you're going to be able to make your bag and then you could use your velvet for... Um, toy making you could use it for your stash for all sorts has anybody got their phone near them because my ears are buzzing like crazy okay and then you also get the lining half a meter of the lining that lovely blue you get your blue thread and you get your silver handle clasp as well Gives it a lovely professional finish, doesn't it? The last one, last one is red. Oh, how seductive is that? That is gorgeous. Oh, yes. That is luscious. Half a metre of your red velvet. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. You then also get, sorry, I've got cake. Honestly, I had so much cake during that break. I'm still choking on it you've got half a meter of your lining you have your um thread and this time you have that brass effect clasp full instructions <coughs> brand new today go on oh yes right because Helen said to us, look, you're going to have so much fabric left over, which is great for your stash if you want to have a play around with the satin or the velvet for other projects. But if you do want to make more bags, then, of course, you're going to need more bag frames. Now, we do an assortment of 10 bag frames, which the graphics are in now. Um, I believe we've got a photograph. They're not here in the studio, but you get... 10 different sizes and there's larger ones for bigger bags the smaller one for little glasses cases you could even do a little matching glasses case couldn't you to go with it how indulgent would that be so there you go when we first bought this assortment of bag frames oh my word it's sold out in a heartbeat every single time we've bought it since then once again it sold very very fast now this was something that wasn't scheduled for the show we only added it um, literally this morning when we said oh Come on, we've got to make sure you get the chance of owning more of the bag uh, clasps, the frames, the purses for bags and purses, as you are going to have lots of fabric to play with in this kit. £14.99, lots of people adding this to their basket. You're going to get so many great tips from Helen this hour that you're going to want to keep making purses and bags galore. Right, should we go across? 
let's go and see how to it's our finale of our how to yeah. section hello, hello. i love look. your makes today this is just I so know. lovely it's great this is something we always need isn't it oh. going out bad i know and when you've made your lovely dress mm -hmm. then you can make your matching that's it. one as well and i love the fact you can have it just as a like almost a clutch yeah but then also have the handles as well so it's really yeah because they just tuck down don't they yeah. so if you do just want it as a little clutch then you can or we're going to give you options as well of some chain in a bit yeah. so um is this something that's fairly simple to construct really really easy okay. if anything it's re it's going to be quite quick to kind of put it together so yeah. it's uh yeah so it's, it's lovely yeah. something you could literally do in an hour yeah, maybe. We'll see. So we'll see. Like, it's going to be very different pace to the last one. It was like, do this, do this, do this. And now it's like leisurely sewing so on it. It'll everything. be great. Brilliant. Exactly. So you get lots of fabric in the kit. You do. If anything, I've got the leftover that I've got. And I've, I've cut one already. And I've cut a kind of, I'm going to demo cutting the next bit. So when you think, I think you can at least get four, four bags out of your whole, the whole really section. So it? you can do quite a few for you know for friends and yeah. family and I think well, as soon as you make one I think you, you're gonna think oh that'll be a lovely gift yeah. for someone yeah my mum's got her eyes on one already there she saw this said does that have to go I was like yes mum you can't have this one I'm afraid they are but, really lovely because also yeah. it's little um even I'm thinking even like little um flower girls or bridesmaids yeah. you can all have matching yeah. it'll be really cute and you can put the chain on and then you can still tuck the chain inside ah, so okay. even if it's attached you can attach it on so the um the chains by the way the graphics are coming in so these this is the antique bronze and then we've got a silver as well so you can attach those on and then what do you mean by tucking it yes yeah, so you can either have it obviously like that yeah. then which is lovely or you just Put it all inside. Oh, brilliant! So you could have a choice of two then. So yeah. you can just get keep the it. And you've got both. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, and then the silver one, just so you know, this is to go with the red or the blue. So this is to go with the um, the velvet kits. Yeah. They're nice size straps as well. They're nice length straps actually. You could yeah. wear this on your shoulder, couldn't you? They're nice and solid as well. Yeah, they're not. They go with the size all. of the bag, I think, which works really nicely. In fact, could you have this on your shoulder? Is that yeah. a shoulder length? Yeah, absolutely. Very nice. <laughs> okay, just very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, oh, we've got a little haberdashery bundle. So yes. we're going to need some interfacing and that's what gives it that lovely body. Yeah, the absolutely. The Duchess satin is really nice and, um, it, what's the word, structured anyway. Yeah, it gives you a shape. The, the satin, the outside one, only has the thin interfacing. Okay. But your lining has the fusible fleece. Right. So... H640, your um, interfacing, it's great for your stash anyway. And then a vanishing marker as well. Nice little bundle, £16.49. So in the instruction, it gives you the option of making two different sizes. Is this yes. the larger of the two? This is the larger one. Brilliant. So then the, yeah, the smaller one is, if I show you compared to the pattern, so that is the size of the pattern of the large bit here. You can see that. And then the smaller one is on the next page. So it's, it's Sorry, quite so that's a different. The, that's, that's the, the large, large one, and then you can see there's them a lot smaller. Yeah. In comparison, they're so nice little purses. Yeah, almost. really cute little coin purse then as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's nice to have the two choices, and they really are really simple to sew. The hardest bit, the fiddly bit, is putting the frame, obviously the glue in and the frame. Yeah. So I'll give you some tips on that. Okay. And um, yeah, just brilliant. Give it a go. So I'll show you. What, it's got everything here for what you need to cut. It tells you that you have to cut your outside pieces uh, with one pattern piece, and you also cut your lining with that same pattern piece. With the velvet, do you need to think about the pile, the nap? Yes, you're reading right. my mind. Oh, the nap, you've yes. got it. She's got the, I'm learning. She's got the lingo. <laughs> so what you'll see with your velvet is when you are cutting them out, just make sure that you cut them out the same direction. You don't want one to be turned the other way because even if I just lay this out, so I don't know whether it will show much on the screen, but just turning around gives you a very different oh, yeah. tone with the light. So it's something where you kind of need to see it to really understand right. what it does. So you don't really want to be putting your pattern pieces all different ways. Keep them all with, say, the top and the bottom just lined up through. Mm -hmm. Because you just see with the nap, even though this is really nice and soft, if you brush it, you can see that it Oh, it it's kind like of brushing a dog well. the wrong way, isn't you it? You need to brush it all the right way. 
and just bear that in mind when you cut, which is why I've got this spare bit, just to show you that when you've got this, you can place your pieces on and just keep them as straight as you can. So I'm gonna demo just cutting these and then just cutting the interface in, just so you can see, because there's a few little things with cutting the velvet that you just need to bear in mind because it is really it's quite soft. So what I've done, I've folded it so I've got the wrong sides together because then it sits better, it'll mm -hmm. stay in place. Whereas if you fold it with the velvet sides together, there's quite it's a bit a of bit movement sloppy. within there. So it's sometimes a little bit easier this way round. And then you place your, your pieces on and you might find it a little bit tough to go through because it's quite thick. Are you okay pinning on your velvet? Yeah, part? same thing again, like, like with the satins really, keep it within your seam allowance. So your seam allowance is six mil on this. So you do need to make sure that you, you know, keep any markings within your seam allowance when okay. you're doing it. And how about pressing? Try and press from the inside. Mm -hmm. and you can press, press on the reverse. Flat. Yeah, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't press straight onto the velvet because you might get the iron marks yeah. a little bit on there. But as with anything, try a sample bit and just see, see what it looks like. But I'd pin everything really well. You can see I'm having to almost just force the pins through a little bit when you're doing that. So I'll just demo this little bit. And in the instructions, it says to cut this larger pattern piece in the exterior fabric and the lining fabric. And it also says for the interfacing, but you actually end up cutting the interfacing down a little bit, so it's a little bit smaller. Okay. So I'll show you that bit in a sec so you can see the size difference. But when you've got everything pinned really well, you can either use your blade or just cut as you go. And the key thing is, if it's really well pinned, see like this bit here, I'm just gonna put another pin in there. So at least then nothing will move. Yeah. But could you go through it with your rotary cutter like you we could. did in the last hour? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's so that. satisfying, that sound, isn't it? I know. Oh. Good sharp scissors. Lorraine says, hi, Helen. Lovely to see you back. Ah, oh, hello, Lorraine. It's nice to be back. It feels like it's been when a bit of a gap. The, when was the last time you were here? I don't know. What do we know? April. We're in April When now. did April come about? Um, I think I've been up each month, but I, yeah. I'm losing track yeah. at the moment. We're so busy with the, with just life and things for a minute. But and I think uh, I'm at the end of the month, I think. Uh, Lisa Lamb demoed the pumpkin purse when she was on with John and did the two in the same hour. Loved Helen's demo. Oh, OK, so was th when was this demonstrated then, Paul? We'll find it. Oh, thanks, Anne. Thanks for that, because Paul was thinking that this was a new one. Maybe they did, they just briefly covered it yeah and if there's two i think you could you yeah. could speed sew and do the two easily this is why i'm going to go nice and right. leisurely for yeah. this one now now when you've cut your your pieces velvet isn't something that particularly creases anyway right. so you should be okay yeah. should i mean this has been it. you know folded and everything and it looks absolutely fine yeah. from that side so then what you'll do is if i place this pattern piece over the top this is for your fusible fleece. So if I place it, or even just place it straight onto this, you'll see that that is smaller. Mm -hmm. So in the instructions, you'll cut your lining and your velvet or your satin using the bigger pieces. Okay. Then you'll cut your fusible fleece in the smaller one. But on it, it does actually say to cut the woven interface in the bigger bit and then chop it down using this pattern piece. You don't need to. So you might as well just, use if that. I'm right, Lisa, if I'm wrong, correct me, but you might as well um, use this smaller pattern piece for your fusible fleece and for your interfacing. Okay. Because what you want is everything to just be that little bit smaller. Is that to reduce the bulk, do you think? Yes, to reduce the bulk in your seams. So it will be that kind of effect there and how are these to fuse on if we're talking about you know being careful with an iron are you best to use yeah. a pressing cloth you could do i think with the velvet definitely iron from this side yeah. just don't put your iron onto yeah. this one and you know just brush it down a little bit just make sure it's all nice and flat afterwards make sure there are no marks but yeah just gently with your iron over the top okay with your fusible fleece 
it's sometimes quite hard to actually iron the yeah, fleece yeah. on. So if you're trying to iron it on this way round, then it won't necessarily fix. So you will need to iron it from the fabric okay. side. So put it on about two. Again, mm -hmm. I wouldn't put it on more than two. And then when you do iron this on, just hold it gently. But with the lining being quite thin, maybe turn it down to about one and a half and just okay. check. Check that it is fusing okay. But when you're only going through a thin layer, then you're going to get to the glue better yeah. rather than trying to get through a thick layer yeah. of the fleece. So you definitely want to just do that bit by bit as you're going. So when I just, I'm just going to cut this little bit out so you can see the difference. I'll use that smaller section. The interfacing comes, by the way, in the haberdashery bundle. Um, which graphics have you got on at the moment? The turquoise one is your main graphic. And then below um, is the satin pumpkin purse kit, the, so the purple, which is very popular actually, the purple. Is it? Which is your favourite colour? Um, I do love this royal blue. It is gorgeous. I think all of them are really nice. I've struggled to choose. I, I think the velvet, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this in the, mm. in the velvet. It's the red velvet? Yeah. Oh, I see, I do like the red. Mm -hmm. I think you could just make make one of these for every outfit that you <laughs> that you need it yeah, for. Yeah, that's it. And you get a bit carried away with this one. So when we cut this, there are no markings on the patterns just yet that you need to worry about. But just so you can see the size difference then as well. So I would place that on, and then just make sure that the tip is nice and level there. The tops are matching up, and then just hold your iron on. Just a few. So if I might get the iron out, yeah. just do it now just to see if you can see how it works. You can almost feel the velvet a little bit. Where's our pressing mat? I don't know whether Chris is taking it away. Oh, oh don't no, worry then. Oh, good, good. Just so I want to see whether you can see much underneath when we do it. So we'll turn that down to oh, just a bit lower because you've got quite a lightweight interface and going on this one so it's more about the fusible fleece inside okay. that gives it the body so this is just to give you a little bit of structure in the top layer so make sure you're all positioned and then just hold the iron on so um, it's a press not an iron yeah i just kind of hold it and just move it up but sometimes if you've got um i know with some of my tabletop ironing boards they can end up, you can see the metal coming through or you might mark the iron mm. a little bit mm. if you're holding on the velvet. So just, just make sure it's nice and soft yeah. to place the velvet on. So we'll just do that. And that should be enough for you then. Yeah, so yeah. that's all nice yeah. through there then. That hasn't come through at all. So just nice, soft. This is great because this is padded is ideal so you really want to get it nicely ironed on to start with because otherwise if it starts to come away it's harder to iron throughout the process so really just hold it on for about your six seconds and then you've got your pieces ready to go so you've got a little bit of prep to do before you start putting it together okay but you should have that nice even gap even around there. the edge okay that's what you're looking for and then you can just see then as soon as you brush it <laughs> totally changes Okay, so we can move that bit, that's all good. And I'm going to get all your pieces out ready. So these are the ones I've just cut. So this is ready. I do love that it's quite a quick make. You know, if you've got a, an a event to go to and you're looking around the shop stages for a bag and you think, do you know what, I could just make my own. Absolutely, this is, uh, this is really super quick. easy. So you will have all together so you have yeah. your larger bits and you have your smaller bits the same with the interface and inside that's my spare one and then you have exactly the same in your lining sections with your fusible fleece on so you have this so what we're going to do is we're going to start to position these almost this way around actually because these are your side ones the ones with a little triangle a bit there yeah. are your side pieces and these then are oh see you can see the difference in the light there because i think one of these was the one i've just cut out i think on screen i don't know if you can see it there but it's quite a difference in color yeah. between those yeah so if i put that one back oh, in oh my word so that's one that was cut in a different direction yeah 
Oh. So it's quite, it seems meant to be that I just did that. That's so good. So it, you do need to be careful that you have got it the right way. But it is a purse, so I wouldn't worry too much. But it's something where if you start doing with the dressmaking, That's really it. bear that in mind. Not so much satins. You don't. There is a little bit of tonal difference with satins if you do put it at 90 degrees. So I would still same thing with that. But it's not too many pieces, it and it's no. not too complicated to start no. to get your head around it. Exactly. When you start doing toy making or things like that. You do notice you the do. different colours when you're looking at different parts so of the body. So just make sure that when you are cutting them, cut them the same time and place them the same way up. Right. And not like that, because yeah. otherwise you get that real contrast Gosh, yes. between the two. And you, we can see it, but you can see it really clearly. You can see it, yeah. If you take a photograph, you probably actually be able to see it clearer yeah, then. Yeah, exactly. Right. From this angle, you don't notice so much. Oh. So, good for you to see that. Brilliant. So we'll pop those out the way. Now, what we want to do on these bigger pieces, these are going later on into the frame like that. Mm. So it's worth, while they're nice and flat, just to find the halfway mark. We'll fold it over, and I'm going to just use the, the marker for now. So, oops, oops, sorry. So we'll just mark that on halfway point on every piece. We can see the halfway point on there anyway, but every piece of the larger section, which is your front and back. Your um, fabric, vanishing fabric marker comes in your haberdashery bundle as well. We'll do the same on here just in case. It's, we can't quite see when we're matching everything up. So same on there. Okay, the same on that one. And you're making the mark on the interfacing on these ones and the lining on this? Yeah. Reason? Yeah, because, just because the fusible fleece oh. is there. Okay. So. And I suppose that's just a bit harder to mark. Yeah. But good point. Yeah, mm. they've just automatically gone to do that bit. OK, so the next thing is to start to match everything together. So I'll show you the instructions in here. So it is quite clear to see what you've got happening here. You've got your pieces with your interfacing bits. So I'll flip them all over. And then you're going to join together one of the front sections and one of the side sections and you'll do the same on the other side and you kind of just start to put them all together. So if we just start with this one, you'll see there's a little bit of a, if I place that flat again, a little bit of a triangular kind of yeah, corner there, which yeah. is really handy because then you can actually line that up really well oh yeah, on the perfect. top there. Now I am going to pin, but just keep my pins within the seam allowance. You can use your, your clips, clips as well. Yeah. Just go straight down to the point. That bit done. And then we're going to sew a six mil, I think it was. Six mil seam allowance, just all the way around the edge. But you need to stop just at the point at the bottom there. So it might be worth, if you're not sure by eye, just mark your kind of your, your point where you need to stop sewing okay. on each bit there. So we'll do the same on there. Quite a nice smooth curve, actually, isn't it? It's yeah. Can I see? It is really, really straightforward, this one, which is good. I think. I believe you. How addicted it will be. So I'm going to prepare these as well. But what you need to do is make sure that you're not doing two of the same sides because otherwise you're going to be putting... You don't want to be putting your sides no, together. You yeah. want to have this the larger one, one. And then you want to have... So... Uh, that's one that's going to go to there. That's going to go there. So just a, you just need to remember a curved one next to a V one. Exactly. Okay. So do them almost as pairs. pairs like that. So we want to, I'm, I'm getting myself confused upside down there. So we want this side to be put here. So when it opens up then, centre side, centre side. So we'll do this on each piece. I'll just start. So are you that just going to sew from here down to that point? Yeah, just down to the point where the six mil up from the point marker is, where you need to stop, there. And we do this on the outside and we do it on the inside pieces as well. So I'll just put that on there. So the lining you don't need to worry, you can pin more in the lining and not worry because it's inside obviously you're not going to get pin marks in there and then we'll do the same on this side 
we've got like that. No special needles or anything. This is all nice and straightforward. For How you is sewing. that? Do you need your walking foot or anything like that on? Will that help to control it? I don't, I don't think it needs it, but if you're used to using it, yeah. by all means do it. But it's not too thick with a wadding, yeah. well, with a fleece anyway, so you're okay. So we're going to just keep the needle in the middle, and I'm just going to make sure that the edge of the fabric is just within the edge of the foot. It's just a normal, a normal foot. Yeah, because you're not actually going to go over any of the 8640 fleece, no. are you? Just if on the side of it. Yeah, if anything, when you position it on, you should, yeah. you know, that will give you a guideline for your sewing. Mm -hmm. But actually, that curve isn't too scary. I was thinking, no, I want to see how fine. you conquer that curve. But Just as you normally would, just sew a few bits and just turn as you go. And just be mindful of where you want to stop at that bottom bit. Do you do a reverse? Do you reverse, yeah. yeah. Cut it and clear it out. And then we'll do the same on each one of these. Brilliant. Then. While you do that then, we'll go and quickly okay. recap while you're Great. just stitching around those cards. Um, come on with me. Do I need to take anything else with me? No. Uh, so, the purple's the most popular. The purple is lovely. It's really nice. This is the um, perfect purple duchess satin which is so luxurious it's got great structure it's not actually as um, slippy as you would imagine with satin I think a lot of people will go oh, you work with satin how brave is that but actually with a really lovely simple bag like this what a great introduction to working with satin if you watch the first show of how to the dress was actually made out of the duchess satin and, and Helen did give us lots of great tips so if you want to watch that back um, I think that's really demystified as working with the satin. So you get a half a metre of this one, which is lovely and wide. So you've got plenty of fabric to make. While Helen was saying at least sort of three, four bags even. So you've also got the lining plus your thread and you get one bag frame in the kit. If you do want to make more bags, then we have got some more uh, frames as well. But I mean, I'm just thinking for your stash, this is such a great fabric to, um, to play around with. They're lovely. Full instructions from Lisa Lamb. Um, you get to make both the templates for both the larger and the smaller sort of purse style. So that's the larger of the bags, which is a really beautiful, nice big squared base as well. So you're going to be able to fit loads in there. The turquoise is the one that Helen's working with and it's gorgeous. Um, we'll come to that in a second. The other satin option is the blue which is an amazing royal regal blue. Half a metre of your satin, Duchess satin blue. And then you also get half a metre of your lining, which is your 100% polyester anti-static lining. Uh, this time you get the antique sort of brass effect clasp and you get your thread as well. 24 pounds and 99 pence for your instructions, your thread, your clasp, and both of your fabrics, your outer and the lining. <gasps> Helen's favourite, the red. It's gorgeous, isn't it? But again, we're learning how to tackle all that lovely velvet in this show. This is new to me. I've not seen this velvet before. 27 pounds and 99 pence for um, half a metre of the red, half a metre of the red lining as well. You get the antique brass um, clasp and you get the thread, plus your instructions, your templates for both size bags. This is honestly going to be such a quick and easy, great gift idea. Lots of options with it. Before we do the turquoise, if you want to make this bag again and again and again, which you will when you've done this pattern once, it is such a great, quick and easy make for, uh, for gifts for people, uh, if you want to make more for different outfits. Remember, with the bundle, you're going to get plenty of fabric, enough to be able to make at least three. Helen said even four of the bags. Um, so you can make some little coin purses to match. But £14.99, you're going to get 10 assorted silver plated purse frames so you get two of each you get uh, a couple which are like sort of squared frames you get the the two which are the well actually three that are squared frames two which are the bags and then the little purse or glasses holder and then you get another two of the round ones which are lovely just 14 pounds 99 pence the three large ones still have that really nice big bubble clip as well to get the chain on 
if you want to add the chain, if you want to make it into a bag, and the other two, other three, sorry, have per, a more of a purse clasp frame. Forty pounds ninety nine. Um, it wasn't scheduled for today's show, but when Helen came in and said, there's so much still left over, you're going to be able to make three or four bags, we thought, oh, we've got to add more frames in then. This one is absolutely gorgeous. This is your turquoise. Half a metre. Half a metre. Have you had any cake yet? Oh, my word. Chris is doing so well. Honestly, there's so much cake in the, um, in the office. So much. This is beautiful. Your turquoise. And you also having, you also having half a meter of the lining. It was Paul. Paul did it. Paul had the egg, the mini egg on the top of the cake. You did say we were all saying who's had the top of the mini egg off the cake. And did you tell Wendy? You also get the frame, you get your thread, and you get your instructions. Did you tell Wendy that you did it? She, she was trying to look for the corporate earlier. Who took the mini egg off the cake? Come on! Oh, oh, oh! Oh no! I'm losing my bunnies. Sorry, bunnies. There you go. Come on. <gasps> I'm, not, I'm too big for this set. I can't keep knocking into everything. Too big. There we go. Right. Right. What I have just done is I've sewn your, your halves together, well, your quarters together, and then it's in the instruction to say to clip into your curve. Yeah. So you clip in just up to the stitching, if not just before it, and then you can use, if you haven't got one of these, you can just place your fabric like this and almost iron into the curve but if you have got one of these these are great because then you can just place it around and get your lovely curve out of there so that's really good to do because oh, you want nice. that lovely shape yeah to come through like that and what you then do once you've done your your two where you've ironed them and you've stopped that little bit short there in the instructions, it says to sew the one on, then the second one, then the other one, then the other one. But I found it just a little bit easier just to actually place your two halves together because right on the bottom, just because I'm a perfectionist, you want, you want to just to match meet. that up. <laughs> <laughs> just that it does have a lovely um, point at the end. Can you see the bottom? So it's a nice big squared base, actually, isn't it? It is. And I didn't do it this way, so it's not quite perfect on there. And I thought, right, next time, what would I do? going to match up your seam. So I'm going to just match up right underneath the centre, under there. Now, you will find the velvet will just move a little bit. It will just wander because okay. all the, the nap, it's almost like lots of little fingers are all just kind of moving around, <laughs> as best we describe it. It's just, they're just like constantly moving. So you I'll will need that. to try and get just that positioned as best you can. And then once you've got that bottom bit, you're going to do the same on the top there. So you match up your section. If I maybe move it over here so you can see it against the table. So same thing, we'll just position there. And when I was sewing the velvet, because obviously the sample was in the satin, which was fine, the velvet does move a little bit underneath. So if you do want to use your walking foot, okay. then it wouldn't be a bad thing, you know, as in put it on if you use it, but you can use it without it. Well, that wouldn't be a bad thing, if you know what I mean. Walking mm -hmm. foot is great. But if you just position it well, it shouldn't move too much. So then we just do a swoop around, doing like a, a semicircle. Have you snipped into all of these curves, by the way? Just those there. Just, yeah. And then once I've sewn this, we'll do the same. Yeah. We'll snip in. So you do exactly the same in your lightning. So you're just making two bags, mm -hmm. like you do with most bags, really. You make an outside, make an inside one, and then put it all together. But we're nearly there. It's that, that easy. I think having a, a smaller sort of interfacing as well, it does really help with your team with that, doesn't it? It's just because your guide follow. It definitely is very helpful. <laughs> Especially because feet come in all different sizes these days yeah. as well. Just make sure that isn't slipping off the edge. I've got the seams open on the bottom, so it reduces the bulk there as well. Get that pin out. So you can see it just moves ever so slightly. So just be, don't be afraid to stop, reposition, check yeah. everything's still in the right place. Exactly. With your needle down. Yep, perfect. 
So you've learnt loads already, haven't you? You just sound like an expert already. Well, do you know what? I feel like everything you're doing, I know exactly how to do it. It's very, very strange when you stand and watch everybody yeah. every single day. So I know how to do it. It's and the then I'll go home and I'll be, I know how to do that. And, oh, it's just not the same. <laughs> as you do. But, I, yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning so much. You're all teaching me so much. I know, you're lucky you get to see everyone. Then but that's also see. quite difficult because... I almost, I flick through lots of different things. I can yeah. think, right, I want to start dressmaking. So when I'm a dressmaking beginners course, and then yeah, I think, so maybe you oh, said you were doing and that. And then it's like, oh, but then we have some gorgeous toys that you bring in. I want to do that. And then you want to do patchwork. And then you want to do this. And it's, we're all sort of flitting between things. But bags are so handy to be able to have, because I'm definitely oh, one of these. I think most most people will agree. I have to have bags for everything. I've, I've got so many different so colours many bags. of bags. And, but so it would be great yeah. for me to be able to know how to make bags. I'd save a fortune. I don't know, you'd spend more just buying all your fabrics yeah. and making it in <laughs> yeah. every colour. That's yeah. the thing. I used to make a certain amount of bags, but since demo in the bags on, on here now, there's so many different ones, lovely ones that I've, that I've done. I'm thinking, oh my gosh. Do you still find time to make for yourself? No. Oh. So I'm in, I'm in a repeat wardrobe oh. now. I've cut a few pieces out okay. that I'm ready to sew, but I just haven't had time to do them. So I'm hopefully going to have some new dresses soon. Yeah, you definitely need to... I think when um, you learn to sew, you spend so much time then making for other people all the time, yeah. don't you? You just don't Never have time have to do time. it for yourself. So same thing. Snip into your, into your curve around here. I'm not going to worry so much about pressing the line in just for this demo, but this bit is important. So we'll cut into there. So the straight bit you don't need to worry so much, it's mainly that curve where it allows the fabric to spread out when it's turned the right way round. So We've got just over 10 minutes. Perfect, well, that's good. So that now we'll put to one side. This will get this bit inside. This is so handy, I want one of these. Oh, we've got one of these hams. I wonder if they're available. They're definitely on the website, I think. Great. Yeah, they're on the website if you want to have a look. It's just so much easier doing this. Do you not have a ham at home? No, I don't. I'm just very, as I said before, I'm quite old school. Like the equipment I've got, you know, I, I just use quite basic things and it's what I've always known. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, this has opened my eyes to so many little... Well, nits. that's it. I know just so many guest bits. designers that come in and just play with yeah, all of the things. Like, oh, I want to go on that. I want to go on that. <laughs> no. Like a little mini iron would be good for this as well, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, one of my, um, my fabric reps had seen me on the, one of the first shows and I think I was using... I think I, it, it was something about using the glue, the glue pen. Right. I oh never yeah, do things so like that. I just pen. tack yeah. everything. And uh, I got home and he'd messaged me. He said, oh, I saw you on the programme. I've just popped one of those in the post to you so you can try it at home. Oh. I thought, oh, I feel like a celebrity. <laughs> I had my first little Brilliant. freebie in the post. Brilliant. And it's great. I swear by it now. So thank you, Ashley. That was great. There you go. <laughs> Jealous. I know. So anyway, no, we don't get any freebies. Any just cakes, anything like that will do. Yes. <laughs> so then you have... Your little bits. We don't need this now, so actually we can take I that can away so that. you can see a little bit clearer. Do you need your ham or are you done with it? No, I'm all done now. Put that in there. And then we're going to turn one of them the right way. I think we'll do, well, because this one's out the right way now. We're going to stuff this inside and match up those side pieces. So we'll match up your little corner seams there. Match up this side. And you're only actually going to sew this side bit for now. So we just match up that little point at the bottom there. Same on this side. Pauline's loving the demo. She said, Helen is brilliant. Oh, thanks. You need to come from Swansea more often. I know I it's a bit know. far, isn't it? But we need to get you a couple of, couple of more shows a month. I've got, what have I got? The end of the month and then... I think I've got a few more, but I've got more booked oh, in. Oh, good. Just trying to juggle everything at That's the moment. It. I say wedding season. What I'm going to do is just sew about three mil from that seam down to the point and up to that seam. Okay. So you can take your, your arm off. Perfect. And then, it, so it's a bit less this one. It's, it's three mil. Hopefully just if yours doesn't touch. come off, if you can't remove your free arm, can you just do this without? Can oh, yeah, absolutely. You just need to turn this. You just need to sew, not this bit. I'll the show you. Maybe yeah. I'll show you the next bit now. Down to your point. And it might be easier, oops, 
didn't mean to press that one. Just start again there. When you get to your corner, just put your needle down and you will just need to pivot around then. Check everything's flat. So if it won't reach, especially if you're doing the mini one, then you would just sew this way. So it means you've got a bit more bulk uh, yeah. up here. But actually, but it's still doable. You can yeah. still see everything. I'll do both so you can see. But you do need to make sure with your velvet that it is held in place so it's not slipping. Do you always take, take your pins out? Do you always make sure that you take them out? I do, I do. I used, I used to sew over everything, but then once I did, um, well, I have snapped a pin and it's one hit me in the forehead. Oh, my, my mum bought me safety goggles years ago. I was <gasps> like, mum, I can't wear those, don't be silly. And, um, and then about two years ago, then a bit did flick me in the white of my eye and it made me think, right, actually, it's not you worth know, it. If you wear glasses, great, but if not, it's not worth it. So that slips slightly, as you can see, but it won't matter too much. So I just cut down to that little V there, mm -hmm. and then you turn the whole thing through these side gaps. So don't panic if you think, oh God, what's that doing there? <laughs> most of my people, are, well, it's wrong, it's wrong. But then push your lining in, and what you need to do is then just match up this, this top bit. So you can match up your centre markings that we did at the beginning, on there. And then we just sew, like again, about three mil just over the top. And this part. And same on this side. So just tuck everything in, spread it out. And then just again on the other side, get your center pieces matched up. This will all be then tucked into the frame, won't yeah, it? Yeah, that's the fiddly bit. Right. Which I don't know how much time we'll have to do. We've got about do. five minutes to sew. Right, I can show you how to put it in. Because the glue, um, depends which glue you use. You can either use the one that gets tacky, so okay. you wait. So obviously yeah. I wouldn't be able to do spend 50 yeah, minutes waiting yeah. anyway. But what I might do is kind of position it in yeah. and show you a few tips yeah. on how I'd find it easier. But just so you know, we're just going from seam to seam and just kind of catching the end really with your, as it says, a three mil seam allowance. So we'll just attach your layers together is, is what you're trying to do here. And if you bear in mind with your frame, your frame is only a certain depth. So you always want to keep everything less than that depth of the frame. Right, so this one is quite deep actually. I don't know if you can see, I might get a real tape measure. Probably about one centimetre deep. So as long as you keep everything within that, because what you don't Eight want mil. to see is any stitching sticking down from there at all. So I do little snap purses, and they're about half of what six mil. So you do have to keep everything within that. And it's yeah. until you've made it the first time, you don't quite know why you're doing it. And then as soon as you make it, you think, oh, right, that's, that's why, why I need yeah. to keep it less. So try it out. Learn from your mistakes. Don't worry. Right, now this is quite nice on here because the velvet stays and keeps its shape, but you will find that you've got three layers. So it is mentioned in here, but something I personally do is I would zigzag around there just, just to keep all your layers inches. together. Yeah. Yeah, just if I just put oh, it on. Oh, zigzag stitch yeah, it. Yeah, just okay. to hold all your layers together. So you're actually zigzagging. I don't know how big this is. A bit wider than that. You you want to be a bit wider. So I, I want to just catch the edge of the fabric in. So you're almost just wrapping it all under. That just a normal zigzag stitch. Yeah. yeah, and at least then you haven't it got your lining around, yeah. doing any of that. Yeah. So you can see the difference there. That's my little personal tip. Yeah, that's really it. good. Not you're not going to see it. It will all be inside anyway. I'll do this side and then we can just show you how to position it ready for your gluing. 
Remember, if you want the extra clasps, there is availability on the whole um, assortment. You get ten different frames um, in an assortment, two of each. I'm going to show you how to fix those into your bags. So it's, no matter what size or shape you make, this is, this is how you glue them in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For lots of different bags. Yeah, four different ones. You, you kind of want to treat it as that, really. These are your side okay. points where the hinges go in. So it might be worth either popping a pin in or doing a little tacking stitch to help you. So you probably won't have time to actually glue it. But if I show you what I would do to prep it, I would definitely mark the edges there. You've got your centre point marked up here as well. I might just, whoops, just so I can see, just put that in there. And you can just about see that one. Now, when you think, when this is actually open, the whole thing fits on, and you'll see that where that hinge is, so if I almost do it that way, yeah, that's how it's all going to fit. So that pin on the side is going to just go where that hinge is. Okay. That one's going to go there. That's going to sit right under the centre there and there. So it is important you try and get all of it lined up. Now, how much time have we got? About to two glue, so. so we won't glue. Okay, no. Not that I'm, I'm relieved in any way because <laughs> gluing live on air—it's one of those things you're like, oh. So what you would do? It's got a nice sort of like thin nozzle there, hasn't it? That you yeah. would just get glue one side at a time, okay. and you would glue from right from there on the top of your fabric, and you glue all the way up down to that side, and you also then put your glue inside here. Now, depending on which glue you use, you may need to leave it to get tacky, which means that it's better because you've got a bit more time to position. Yeah. If you use, say, an all-purpose glue or textile glue, then they can dry a bit quicker, so you're a bit more quick. Quick. On quick. Um, and what Lisa recommends with this as well is at the end, once you have actually glued this in, you put your piping right. in as well. So I'm just going to push it in so you can roughly see anyway. But when you put your... Do it from this side. You would poke all of this up. And my little tip would be, when you've got your centre mark, that when you've got the glue that's tacky, it might be worth holding that in place and then just tacking around oh, the frame to, to hold, hold it, it in place. Because then you've got your centre point there. Because what you'll find is it will move. Maybe the same down here. You could tack that there, tack that bit there, and then you've got all your key points in place. Good idea. And then it will help you just to push everything up. And when you actually open it all like this, this will all just tuck under. There may have been an extra row of stitching thinking about it on the end. Um, if you need to get that flat, you can always mm -hmm. just stitch that down and like edge stitch or top stitch along there. But when you've got all of that in, you'll see that that creates the shape of your bag. So you do one side at a time. You can see just with this how it comes out mm -hmm. easily. So I definitely tack each bit, get your glue in place, masking tape if you're worried it's going to get anywhere else. So be careful on the velvet, but yeah. put a bit of masking tape maybe around the edge so you don't get it on your fingers and then leave that to dry. And then what you would do is then push the piping, piping in with a little screwdriver from the inside part just to fill it out. Yeah, oh, brilliant. It's the best thing to do. So hopefully that makes sense. Yes, but thank I know if you Lisa's so done it and glued it as well, she's definitely the expert with this side. So you can always watch her gluing bit if she's got any other tips. But yeah, definitely watch that show back as well. But this, super we've learned cute. so much. Thank you so, so okay, much. Okay, it's my pleasure. I've enjoyed. When are you back, did you say? The end of the I month? I think it's the end of the month. I think. Lovely. Thank you very, yeah, very no much. Lovely to see you. So lovely to see you. We see you before you go on your holidays, don't we? Yes. And then oh, hopefully I'll come back refreshed in oh, end of May. Amazing. We love Yay. having you here. Thank you both oh, for both thank hours. Thank you. Enjoy making them, everyone. Yes. Yeah, see you soon. Bye. See you soon. Thank you. I'm organising going over to Swansea to go on Helen's courses because she's just such an amazing teacher, isn't she? Um, we've got four different kits to show you. We'll start with the purple, which has been the most popular. It's that lovely Cadbury box. Mm. Everything relates back to food, chocolate or cake with me, doesn't it? But that Cadbury box purple. <gasps> oh, it's so soft and beautiful, but it's still got structure. The Duchess satin has got great structure. It, it works really well with the dress from the first hour, but also really well with this bag. Um, so you get half a metre of this one, you get half a metre of the lining as well, which is your 100% polyester and 100% uh, polyester anti-static lining. You have your thread and you've got your silver bag clasp with this one. 
The blue is this amazing, sumptuous royal blue. How rich is that colour? Mm, mm, mm. This is the only other satin one. So we've got the purple and the blue in the satin, the other two are the velvet. That is gorgeous. Half a metre, half a metre of your lining. You also have your thread and you have your antique brass clasp. Then we've got two of the um, lovely velvet. Two bundles in the velvet, so the turquoise and the red. Turquoise is the one that Helen was working with. It was really interesting actually to see when she cut the other one the other way around, the difference in colour, wasn't it? So just remember that, remember the, the nap and the pile. So you get half a metre of this, half a metre of your lining, your clasp and just red, plus instructions with all of these, don't forget. And templates come for both sizes, red. I really like the red as well. The red is in um, that lovely velvet, half a metre of that. You have your templates for both of the um, sizes, a smaller bag and a larger bag. So you get the velvet, the lining, antique clasp, and you've also got the thread plus your instructions. And just want to point out on this instructions here as well, look how Lisa talks about embellishing. So once you've got your bag, I mean, think about maybe adding some embroidery or some uh, Stravoskis or beads. I mean, it would look beautiful, wouldn't it? <gasps> Such a gorgeous evening bag. I'm so pleased. We've got you kitted out, ready for the ball with your dress and your bag now. You will go to the ball. Okay. If you loved the savings from yesterday, oh my word, stay tuned. We've got more discounts to bring you. And this time it's Liberty. Don't go anywhere. A whole hour and Liberty discounts after this. 